Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 11, 11 a.m. Fireside Chat on this Wednesday, March the 23rd, 2020. Thank you so much for joining us today. Me, of course, Vicki Meeks Miller. And as we celebrate National Social Work Month, I am delighted to welcome Mr. Todd Mullins, who works here at Richfield in Social Services in the Social Services Department in the Rehab Center, once again, right here at Richfield. Welcome, Todd, and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me today. It's a pleasure, and I tell you, um, you and many others do such admirable, admirable work um, helping families, and um, I would just like you to tell us what, uh, how you got into this social services field. Tell us a little bit about your background. I started out as a CNA in 1996. I've been in healthcare for about 26 years. I've done a various of uh, numerous position in healthcare and long-term care and rehab side. And I just love to make a difference in the residents and in their activity of daily life. Awesome, awesome. And that is such important work. Uh, we certainly do see the impact of the work that you do every day here at Richfield and beyond. Um, so again, so tell us about yourself and exactly what your position here at Richfield entails. I love working in social services because it gives me the opportunity to do work closely with the residents and the family to make their transition smooth for discharge planning or long-term care services. Wonderful, wonderful. And Richfield, of course, is uh, provides a continuum of care here. And so a lot of times that involves um, someone who's come here, someone who may live here um, and have a procedure that they may take do rehab here at the rehab center. And then perhaps it might um, mean that they transition to another uh, level of care right here on campus. So you're able to provide uh, those services that are necessary. So how long have you been with Richfield? I've been with Richfield for almost five years. Wonderful, wonderful. And tell us, what do you like most about your work? What I like about my work is I can help residents on a daily basis and I can put myself in their shoes and their family's shoes about mm -hmm. ensuring not only to assist the family, to assist the resident of their daily needs mm -hmm. and make sure the family needs as well. Wonderful. And I know that when uh, residents and family members are in this position, it's probably a stressful time and uh, something is going on that have uh, put them at the rehab center and they need a lot of care and attention and you're able to, to provide that. And that is awesome. Yes, we sure can. Here at Richfield, we can help you. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so finally, I just wanted to know what inspires you to do this work? I can work with the resident and resident families to meet their daily needs, to, you know, to educate them, to inspire them, to get motivated in case you're in the rehab and everything. Because a lot of people, they feel a little bit down, but we need a little bit of motivation, talk to them, encourage them that we can do all things if we just give us a chance and try. Wonderful, wonderful. That's what social work is all about. That's what social services is all about. Um, and of course, um, you are helping and improving the quality of life, which is the goal for social services and every team member here at Richfield. That is true. That is awesome. Um, again, uh, the work is so uh so respectable and so admirable and necessary. So we thank you and all social service workers, social workers um, here at Richfield and beyond. Um, we appreciate you for all you do. So thank you so much for your contributions each day. Thank you. You are so welcome. Um, and so from our jar of awesomeness today, in honor of Social Work Month, the quote, uh, is one that um, really does sum up what social workers and social service workers do. And it states, social work is love made visible. 
It is the art of listening and the science of hope. So I, I know that you are blessed each day to see that hope grow whenever those needs are met and the plan is put in place for them to go forward. So that has to be very rewarding for you. It is very rewarding. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, again, we just wanted to honor those who do this courageous work and um, who reach out to others and make the world, that make their world a better place, um, who help them in their time of need and really provide the support that is necessary whenever we, uh, they are facing that. And, other, and we all might find ourselves in a position of needing the services of a social worker or social services. So it is such a, a, a comfort to know that these resources are here for us. So thank you again, Todd. And if you um, ever need the help of Todd or um, need information about rehab services, um, Todd, could you tell us how you could be reached? You can call me at my phone number is 540-380-6575. I'm in the rehab center. And if you have any questions or if you don't want to call, if you're in the facility and you have any questions, just come by and see me. Wonderful. You can come right into the rehab center to the front desk and they will direct you to where um, Todd is located and he can answer any questions that you might have. Wonderful. Thank you again so much, Todd. It's been a pleasure to have you. Thank you for inviting me. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, as a reminder, uh, the Learn at Lunch today has been canceled. Um, so there will be no Learn at Lunch today at 12 noon. However, we look forward to resuming next month when a uh, representative, uh, Pat Heyer from Virginia Tech's uh, Continuing Education and Lifelong Learning Institute will join us on April the 12th to share great opportunities to, enrich, to enrich your intellectual well power. So we look forward um, to that uh, Learn at Lunch series next month. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I look forward to seeing you next week. And um, again, as uh, has been mentioned during other uh, meetings, uh, Chaplain Gary will soon start a series in conjunction with Okies to guide us through a difficult uh, process of uh, grieving and planning uh, for uh, those types of needs. So we look forward to that um, programming starting on Fridays, um, and I believe they probably will start next month. Thank you all so much for joining us. I hope you will have a wonderful Wednesday, and enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye. Her husband and their seven children huddled together in a one-room abandoned filling station. The delivery was made using the doctor's automobile headlights. Appalled at the care, or lack of care, which was provided for indigent patients, Mrs. Harris appealed to the County Board of Supervisors for the use of an old house on the county farm west of Salem. Mrs. Harris and the women from the social service clubs, armed with scrub brushes and paint, made the old house habitable. A Roanoke hospital donated two discarded beds and Mrs. Harris devised bedside tables from orange crates and stoves from oil drums. She admitted her first patients for a fee of $5 for two weeks of care. When the Roanoke Public Health Association was founded in 1937, the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors voted to turn the entire project over to the association to be run as a nursing home and be known as Mercy House and ultimately Richfield Living. From our humble beginnings, Richfield Living has evolved